Welcome to another episode of Real Life Survivor Stories. I talk show about real life, real people, and real stories. If you're new and you're just tuning in, Real Life Survivor is a nonprofit organization. And what makes us unique is that we're an organization for every cause, every situation, and every circumstance. So no one ever has to feel alone or suffer in silence. We share stories on every platform. And here we give you a voice. And I'm so excited today to have Kelly in the studio all the way from Moncton, New Brunswick. Thank you so much for coming in today. No problem. How was your trip? It was great. The weather was perfect. Wow. It was good. It's warm out there. It is very warm. I hope warm. you have air conditioning. Uh, it's broken. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Kelly. Um, you have an amazing story, and I have been looking forward to your story, and um, it has really touched me in my life, and um, I'm going to have you share what you've shared with me. Um, I'll let the viewers know, uh, Kelly is a real-life survivor of breast cancer, and her journey didn't stop there. So with that said, um, Kelly, would you like to let the viewers know sure. um, when you were diagnosed and what your journey entailed and where it went from there? So I found the lump in my breast eight days before my 42nd birthday. Okay. And I didn't want them to wait to tell me, so I was officially diagnosed December 23rd. 2015, so Merry Christmas to me, right? But I knew, I knew right away what it was. Okay. And my husband kept saying, don't think nef negatively. Right. Don't think that. I'm, I thought that way. Right. So it wasn't as devastating as what it was when they officially told me. Right. So I had to have a biopsy and then went in, they cut a piece out. Um, then I had a complete mastectomy in 2016. Okay. I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks because my oncologist wanted me to be inpatient. The appointments are quicker. Right. And uh, being outpatient, I waited months for like CT scan or anything. Right. So 2016, it was a blur, but I had chemo, radiation, and um, my mastectomy as well. Okay. I hated it. Right. I lost my hair too. Wow. Three times. Wow. That's the worst thing a woman could go through is losing your hair. So that's why I keep it short now. It looks amazing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so not only was I diagnosed with cancer then, yes. that was January 5th. I was in the hospital saying, Dave, my granddaughter was born. Okay. <laughs> it was a whirlwind then. Um, I was diagnosed with diabetes. While you were in the hospital? While I was in the hospital, they would take blood work to make sure right. everything's okay. Okay. So I said, oh yeah, that's a great poker hand. Here's cancer, we're gonna be a diabetes. I'm like, oh gosh. Right on, wow. So I blew that out of the water yeah. from my meds and whatnot, so I'm, Diabetic free, I guess you could say. Okay, well, congratulations. Thank That's you. A, a, you know, a milestone, like it's well, kept. losing weight and everything helped and whatnot. So, I suppose, right? Yeah. But there's a whole truckload of stuff, you know what I mean? I mean, you're trying to too focus much. on what's happening, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, by the way, you yeah. know what I mean? You got this too. Oh, right. thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. But yeah, no, 2017, no, 18. 17 was good. Okay. I had just one treatment of my immunotherapy, which is Herceptin for her true positive cancer, mm -hmm. is what I have. And uh, 2018 came along, I had a new um, diabetic drug, and they thought it was causing a slow cardiac arrest. My lungs were filling up with the fluid. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, so it is. 
They different. did it. They, it was totally different. I'm like, I coughed for four months. They treated me for everything, pneumonia, bronchitis, you name it. Mm -hmm. They treated me for it. I had more antibiotics than the pharmacy had. Right. So they uh, said, they called me up because I signed, I actually signed myself at the hospital. Because I did a bronchoscope, found RSV in my lungs. And I said, isn't that what babies get? Wow, yeah. It was masking the cancer. When it went away, poof, there she was. So they gave me chemo and I was fine. No more coughing. Okay. Not once. I was so relieved to that because coughing's the worst. Exactly. And you're not feeling good and you're going through all this, all these treatments and just yep. the, the emotional and, you know, the, just the physical stress of everything. It is. Right. And Very I can just imagine. So. And I, again, I, I really um, commend you because I am, I'm, I'm on this side of the table, but I mean, there's so much going on over there and what you haven't told the viewers yet is, is just breathtaking. And mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so it didn't stop there, did it? No, it didn't. The, I was in for seven weeks. They finally come back and they said, uh, we're gonna do an experiment to reduce the inflammation. Right. And that is like a chemo, so you're gonna be on the oncology floor. And I said, okay, fine. I went in, they were getting me all ready. And the nurse came in, she's still my nurse to this day, is she? down in oncology. And uh, she said, they're postponing it for now. I'm like, really? Yeah, your doctor and the hospitalist are in the corner talking to somebody else or coming to see you. I looked at my husband and I said, that's not good. Okay. I knew right away it spread somewhere. And that's when they told me it went into my lungs and my bones, my sternum, my hips, my ribs, my thoracic spine, my lumbar spine, you name it. It was all. But now they're all stable. They're stable. They're there, but it's stable. So it just, it's just, yeah, it's kind of like at, you know. Yeah. Every three months I get what's on called cause. Zometa. Yeah. And that's for bones. Right. I, knock on wood, never broke bone. No. And I don't plan on it. <laughs> So it's not gonna, it's not spreading, it's just like- It's I, I stable. It's, it, it's paused, kind yep. of, it's not moving. It's not moving. Fantastic. So then I was fine with that. I had uh, that treatment amended every three months. Right. Perceptin every three weeks. I still go that for that every three weeks and three months. Yes. And then I got a cold in um, November of uh, 2019. And every time I coughed, it felt like my head was going to split open, literally. So I said, we better go to the hospital. My husband said, yeah, let's go. Just something wasn't... It wasn't it was right. Just, it didn't it feel right. 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 It was a different headache. I've had migraines. I've had regular headaches. But this one was different. And they did a CT scan first, found three major bleeds. And I'm like, oh God, not again. And this was on my wow. oldest 26th birthday, his champagne birthday. So that was January of 2020. They came back and said, we're going to do an MRI to get closer into things and see. Right. Yeah, that was the worst news of my life. The two places I didn't want to go was in my brain or my liver. Right. Those are death sentences. Yes. But I've been fighting it since January 2020 with brain cancer. Yes. My biggest one is in the cerebellum. That's why I slur. I can't drink, so I can sound like I'm having fun. So you have a sense of humor. <laughs> I guess I said you out here in the green room. I'm always oh my like, gosh. this woman is absolutely amazing. And um, we joke about it all the time. We have to. Positivity is the best medicine. Absolutely. I tell everybody that who comes to me with questions. Yes. It's like positive. Say positive. Yes, I have bad days. Yes. But the good outweigh the bad. Incredible. 
I have a seven-year-old granddaughter, 15-year-old is my youngest son. Yes. And they need to see I'm positive. That's so right. So they stay positive. That's so, you know what I mean? That is the best way to be. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard for some people to do is to have that positive mindset because it's a scary thing. I it mean, is. we're scared, you know. The C we, word is a scary we, thing. Yes, when we, yep. get, when we go through it, um, you know, but... I guess you'd ask yourself, what, do I, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Like, what? I, all I'm going to do is listen to the doctors. Yep. You know, and pray for the best and have a long, long, long longevity kind of thing. And just your positivity um, is infectious. And especially today with the viewers watching, I can just imagine, you know, there's, uh, you know, many people that have, are going through similar things as yep. you are. And they need your voice today. So I really, really, really appreciate that because... It even helps me in my in my world. So. Some say years, so be years this year we've been fighting. So absolutely incredible. I, and I was wow. there for at the women at the Run for the Cure. Yes. I used to be communication director. Yes. Then I was a run director. That we were virtual, so it was a little different. Yes. But it helped them. Well, yeah, it Sh does. Seeing it somebody in the position that has it as well and what they're going through. And you just don't have it in one place. I have it everywhere. I have almost. it everywhere. Yep. And, and you know what I mean? Like, that's just like, wow. Like, that is like, and here, and, and you're so bubbly and you're so, you know, on top of life. And it's just like, you know what I mean? Before this kicks me in the butt, I'm going to kick it in the butt. Yeah. You know what they what had mean? found a little spot on my liver, but it just bared, thank God. Wow. I'm like, that's two spots you didn't want it to happen. It was in the brain or the liver. Well, miracles happen, uh, yep. and you are a walking miracle. Somebody that's over Absolutely. there watching me. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, your every day, how does it affect your every day? Like, how is, of course, it's like, you know, your life is turned upside down, yep. and it continues to, you know, um, test your faith. And uh, now you're, I imagine your mornings and your evenings are different than they were before. I'm Take us through that. Always a bit. tired. Right. I'm napping all the time. And uh, my mom, uh, she goes to church with my sisters, and they have a prayer thing there in the bulletin. It shows my name and others. Wow. So they pray for me at the church. My friends pay, pray for me every time I go in for treatment, all hooked up, waiting for the meds. And they're like, we're thinking of you, prayers to you, everything. So yeah. it's like. Pfft. So the tiredness is what really. Oh, happens. the fatigue is the worst. Yes. I, thank God that's the only um, other symptom I have other than running nose from the Herceptin. Okay. And I'm thinking, people are going to think I have COVID or something. Right. <laughs> but no, it's it's getting better, so I can't complain. I would do chemo or radiation any day. Would you really? You yeah. find that? See, some people, they and They're don't. the opposite. Yes. Yeah. But radiation, it burnt me. Okay. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I've never, knock on wood, gotten sick from chemo. Thank goodness. So I yes. said, that's why I would use chemo over radiation any day. Right. Now, and, and you mentioned the church, like that's such an important thing, you know, the people that surround you uh, through your most difficult times. Yeah. You know, that really is um, kind of like a lifesaver or lifesavers, I should say, mm. that surround you. And you know that, that, you know, even though it feels like your boat's going to sink, it just stays afloat. Yep. You know what I mean? That's how I look at that. So yep. that's, that's amazing. Or I'm going around in circles. Yeah. And come so, true Sometimes face. those days, we all have those days where we feel like we're just don't know if we're coming or going. Yeah. But I mean, with that mindset that you have and that positive outlook, it's just, I mean, these people that are feeling, you know, the way they are, it's given them an, uh, an uplift in life, yeah. you know, of encouragement that, hey, you know, I'm here sitting, you know, sharing my story, which thank you very much. You're welcome. And, um, you know, all the positivity instead of just, you know, the opposite is just, which you would expect, you know what I mean? With so much going on, um, just wow. <laughs> and every day I do chemo, oral chemo. Okay. 
thank God for compassionate because I wouldn't have been able to afford it. Yeah. It's that expensive. Some people can't take the chemo because yeah. they don't have coverage, wow. which is terrible. That is terrible. To find out that the person ha can't have life-saving chemo, To I know it's like poison in your body, but it saved me. It did. So I yeah. can't complain. No, nope, absolutely. Cannot complain. And, and, and you are not, and you are just doing nothing but like rainbows and sunshine yep. through the worst storm yep. you know, that you're facing. So, wow, that's incredible. It is. So, again, I'm going to ask you, um, where are you today because of it? Like, you, were you working before? Are you still working? I know you mentioned some photography you're doing. I'm doing photography. I have a little... Um, Quick business on the side, yeah, I've seen that. trying to get those uh, off the ground. Um, but yes, photography, I've been doing it for 11 years. Okay. So it's before and after this. Um, but I'm constantly on the go. Everybody I know goes, you you're on the go, you're on the go, you're never home, you're never home. I'm like, I have to be. Yeah. I've got a kid in high school. I right. could take to school, I get a kid in elementary, I got to take her to school and make her up. So it's, I'm never home, right. really, yeah. unless they're home. I mean, that is incredible. I mean, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, people say you're not, ho you're never home, but I mean, you would think you would be. Because like, you I'm know what, sick. Right. But see, you don't, don't even. Look sick. You, no, what, what I was going to say is oh. you don't even think about, okay, I'm not feeling good. I'm, I'm going to just sit here and you get right out there and continue yep. what you're, what you're doing or what you have to do. And that's good because if you can do that and you do, because it just keeps your mind, if you're sitting in the house, you're looking at four walls and you're just, you know, thinking about everything that's going on. But exactly. if you keep yourself mind busy, mm -hmm. um, even though it's still there, you know, your thoughts, yep. you're busy and exactly. it's just, so that's, that's good if you can do that. And I, Again, commend you for that. <laughs> I don't know how I do it, but That's, I do it. Yeah, you blow my mind. Ah. I mean, seriously, it's it's incredible. So these stories that come in to the studio is just, I mean, I'm like I say, I'm on the other side of the table talking to you, and yeah. you just tell me about your every day, and I can just imagine, you know, what that, you know, journey and that path is like. Exactly. And, um, and you asked me my day to day. I used to work. I haven't worked since December of 2018 okay. because of this. Right. So I miss it. I miss the people. Everybody says that. Miss the people, don't miss the work, but I miss it all. Yeah. You, you I know, mean, that's why I'm trying to get everything off the ground to be able to do something at home and feel like I'm bringing some money in kind of thing. So. And you were doing that. Yeah. So that's... Congratulations to that. Thank it's, you. That's, that's awesome stuff. Um, the viewers watching today, if you were to give them some inspiration on this type of thing, this type of walk, you know, um, if this came into someone's path, what inspiration would you give to the viewers out there? Just some encouragement, um, you know, for your darkest day. Yeah, you have to, even during your darkest day, you have to say positive. Yes, you're going to have bad days. But the good away the bad, and positivity is the best medicine. I may not sound like it, but I'm always positive, especially for my kids. They're constantly watching me. Um, my youngest, unfortunately, he came home from a kid at camp last year because mom forgot her phone in the car. And he called and he called and he called. Aww. He calls his father crying, and his CEO said, "You lasted longer than I did." Right. So, I swore to him and promised him I never forget my phone again. Right. And um, so he, it's if I'm not positive, he's down in the dumps. Right. And same with the, the rest of the kids. Right. So, so is that positive attitude, yes. Um, you know, try and stay focused on something that you love to do, mm -hmm. which you're doing yes. very well at, and um, keeping that focus there, which is probably a challenge at some times. It is. But um, 
you're good at what you do. <laughs> and you're, you're a good mentor for these people that are watching that just don't know what to do because yeah. again, it's a scary ride. Um, it's a ride we don't want to be on or never wish for. And um, when you're on it, um, I guess you just have to wait until the ride stops and um, you get off and hopefully um, there's a positive and a, a great outlook yeah. um, through your positive outlook. There are sport groups on Facebook that I'm included in and there was a, a lady that just joined because she was just diagnosed with it and she was terrified. She said, can I inbox you yeah. and ask you questions about it? I said, go ahead, that's what I'm here for. That's right, wow. Fire them at me. Nice. I'm your soundboard yeah. and I'll reply to them as best I can. Right on. So you're helping through, you know. Through support groups. Exactly. Yeah. And just, and that's just such a, just using your voice and letting them use their voice. I mean, it helps them sleep at night and get through their day. Just that, you exactly. say one thing and that, you know, that, that paragraph and it'll, it'll just stay with them because the negative thoughts you have, um, when you go through something like this, like you're always thinking the worst, always thinking the worst, but it's not always the worst. Sometimes no. we have the good outcome. Um, you know, God kind of takes over and then we're out of control. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we have no control. He has the power to, um, you know, do whatever he's doing and yep. we just have to have that faith and our focus. So, um, and you, you're doing that very well. So thank you. thank you for being that person for these people that are watching today and um, giving your input because it's, it's such a powerful movement. Um, like Real Life Survivor, we have so many stories on here, but I say it's not just, you know, an organization, it's a movement. Yeah. Um, and there's so many amazing people that come on board and just open their hearts and share. And it's not easy to share your story. No. It, it really isn't. A and lot of uh, your past uh, interviews I've watched and they've helped me because cancer is in the other thing, thing I've been through. There's been a lot of your uh, people on here that have pushed me through. Nice. Yes. So. And that's what this show is for, is for people that are out there and they're feeling alone and they're feeling lost um, through their walk. Um, we might have a story on here that hits home to you and, uh, and you can say, hey, I'm going, this is what I'm going through. And this story helps you. And um, what are your plans for the future? Hopefully I see here, I'm too stubborn to leave, so, but um, I don't think I'll ever be able to back to work, especially where it's in my brain and Absolutely. how talk it, it is. Right. I was in call center, so they think I'm drunk all the time. <laughs> so I think I just want to stay around, watch my grandkids grow, Absolutely. and watch my kids grow. He's got, my youngest has three years of high school left, so. Absolutely, and yep. I asked you that question because I just wanted to see what your, a lot of people don't have an outlook after they're diagnosed with whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we just get stuck in that dark space and we just kind of curl up and just wait for, you know, yeah. the next bad news. When it's, when it's not, like I say, it's not always bad news no. after the fact. I mean, um, just because you're diagnosed with breast cancer doesn't mean it's going to, you know, be a fatal diagnosis. Um, there's a lot of things that, that there happen. Is. Yes. Yeah. So um, just stay as positive as you can. And I hope, you know, Kelly's story helps you, um, the, the viewers that are watching that are going through this. Um, and also every month, as you know, we have a poster. Um, so we share a story every month of the year. And uh, this is Kelly's story here. So every every survivor that comes on the show gets their own poster, and uh, you're you're in every location for the month of that of that story. So um, nice, nice picture. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you did really well. My youngest took that. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, Kelly, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show mm -hmm. today and traveling all this way through what you're going through. You made it here with no air conditioning. Oh, I know. <laughs> thank well, goodness I was able to go through Sheffield and have the windows open, so. Absolutely. Oh. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. My pleasure. And I want to thank you, uh, the viewers that are watching today. Uh, if you're someone watching that 
would like to share their real life survivor story with us, you can reach out to me on Facebook under Julie Como and also my fan page, Real Life Survivor. And remember, no matter the struggle, no matter the challenge, no matter the obstacle, never give up. We'll see you back here next time, another Real Life Survivor story.